Okay, so we're going to play one, two videos, and then we're going to talk about a couple of them on the other side. Uh, okay. there, there, there's The top secret has even more top secret. Got even more secreter. It's a word now. Okay. Early data, what is this? I'm fixing a tester. I got notice from the test prep team that this tester wasn't passing. This should be beeping. And if you look at the test output, it says it couldn't find the HT20, even though it finds the I squared C address. So something's wrong with the the code. Something changed in the chip, which happens once in a while. But what's neat is my driver uses uh, bus IO, which means that um, I have a layer for I squared C. If I want to debug what's going on, instead of like going to the driver and adding all these printfs and like, I don't know, hooking up stuff, I don't have to. I just recompile and upload. I just give it a second. Beep, 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 beep. And then once it uploads, it gives me debug output. Let me scroll it. So on the serial port, it'll now tell me where it failed to send. So there's a new, there's a Calibre command that is, um, if you look to the right here, it doesn't succeed in sending this I squared C command. So this was kind of a secret command. Something must have changed in it. Um, so I'll probably just comment it out for now so that you can pass test. And update the library and look at the documentation to see what's different. This happens with uh, sensors that don't have amazing documentation. Early data, what is this? These are my two ICN 6211 DSI to TTL display breakouts. This is the Rev B, even though it says A on it. Ignore that. It's Rev B. DSI connector in, and then you've got the TFT display out. This is square. And this says TTL. It's because they're actually kind of two standards-ish for displays. So this is like your standard TTL display. You know, it always kind of looks like this with this little like uh, L-shaped uh, connector over here. But I got some other cool displays, and these all weird-shaped mm -hmm. displays have a different 40-pin st uh, um, standard. So this is a 2.1-inch uh, with capacitive, and you can see on the back, it's got like a bezel. This big one is a, um, so this is interesting. I have to back up a little bit. There's a 4-inch round, a right, nice big 4-inch round. And then this is a half round. It's like a car gauge or something. Mm. Uh, this one doesn't have a touch, and this one does have touch. And then 4-inch um, square with touch, 4-inch uh, square without touch. I think this is 3.4 inch square with touch screen. You see the touch screen over here. And then these kind of funky bar displays. Um, mm. So like, I think these are 960 by 120 or 960 by 300 or so. Uh, this one has capacitive touch. You can see this one is the same size, but uh, without the capacitive touch. Yeah, there yeah. you go. And this one, and you're wondering like, wow, you know, this looks so familiar. What, what shape does this remind you of? Yeah, that's right. It's a five and a quarter inch Yeah, we're gonna floppy. do a project with that. Almost exactly the same size, same mm -hmm. height. So uh, some cool, funky displays and uh, a big, okay. big stepper motor there. Yeah. So we're going to do it. It's coming. Yeah. Well, the other fun thing is you could um, have this the screen come out of the drive, too. So you, someone, uh, we thought of this, but then also someone mentioned this on the socials. They're like, oh, you could have the screen sticking out and show what floppy or image. Yeah, we did that floppy disk, um, the 3D printed floppy disk. So, so we can make it for real. For all those screens, um, this is something we just showed off on. I just designed this today <laughs> like, while, while we were watching the, the stream. Hot off the press. Yeah, so what is this? So I have to, the thing about these displays is that you need to program them over SPI to configure them, and then you can do the TTL. And so there is a little bit of this like fast iteration that you need to do. Each display has slightly different config, I'm sure it's slightly different configurations. Um, and so to test it out, oh, and or maybe have this as a product, um, the ESP32 S3 can drive these displays natively and then with a peripheral and then Jepler, um, I've tasked him to add it to CircuitPython um, so that I can use CircuitPython to quickly like program in the display and test the configurations um, and then draw onto it and then have it be a display and then we'll also backport it to um, Arduino. It's just tough because there's not a lot of spare pin, you know, 16 color, um gpio and then four control pins and then two for the touch and then one for the irq and then the backlight adds up very quickly so i have a couple ideas maybe i can save a couple pins um i have the original dev the original dev board too i can show I'm what this, sure this looks like yeah mm -hmm. this is um this is the official dev board from espresso with the esp32 s3 and then this is a square display 
and then this um, plugs in. What I actually kind of like, the reason I got this dev board is I can actually, I might be able to use it, um, except for it uses a GPIO expander, which is kind of weird, but like this. So this is the uh, connector here. You see the capacitive touch bonded on like these. It's, this is all pin compatible uh, pretty much. And then um, this goes to this uh, two by 20 connector um, that goes here. And this is your ESP32 S3, um, the TTL, uh, sorry, the TFT driver. There's I2S amplifier and microphone here. And I think this is the GPIO expander. So they use a GPIO expander to do the SPI programming. So it's a little complicated than I thought. I was kind of hoping that they would have just the pins available, but no. Um, so I'll figure out how to do that. Um, but this is a, you know, kind of a neat, uh, demo. What's nice is that I can still use this for hardware and I probably should support the TCA 955 as the, um, as the expander. So this is their touch, uh, touch demo, which is kind of nice. And then this is like a little, uh, NeoPixel selector here. You can select the color and then you can do the, uh, brightness. Brightness, bright, not so bright, bright, not so bright. Uh, and then there's this other configuration, and then you can. This is, I think, is LVGL. Yeah. Which does um. There you go. Yeah. Configuration, so you can set up the Wi-Fi. And it has a clock, and it uses Wi-Fi to to get the time. Hey, that's the time. Um. Anyway, so that's the uh, that's some stuff. I just got this today, so I might get this programming um and then i'll order these pcbs this will be like without yeah. the expander very much easier i mentioned this before and, and not not gonna you know name and shame or anything but there's websites that sell all sorts of weird different displays and they just don't work and people get them and they're angry and um they don't they don't you know like we couldn't do that and we wouldn't do that so we wanted to what like why has it made for that brown displays we want to do it right um but last up uh let's talk about something wrong um, so this is a fun, <laughs> this is a fun board that, um, I think the folks who don't know why this is needed got unnecessarily angry because it's like, why are there two USB C's touching each other? It's like the mashed potatoes and the you know, vegetables right. touching. Yeah. Well, it's like, why, like, it's like on a plate, like, why are these two things touching? But, um, what is it, what is this and, and why does it freak people out to say it? Well. I mean, like, it's weird. You're not supposed to, you are not supposed to really do this, but um, this is to solve a problem that already exists. Uh, nobody called me out for my working for a dream joke. Uh, so this solves the problem of some devices. Someone, what? Someone did the gift that says, I understand the reference. Oh, okay. There's a gift for that. Oh, okay. I like, but who knows? Um, so the, the USB-C has these resistors that are on the CC lines. And you're supposed to have these 5.1K resistors that tell the power delivery, the the laptop or the power supply um, to give it five volts, one amp. And some devices don't look for the resistor. They just always put out five volts. And so there's no like configuration and they're like, hey, it's five volts out and you're happy. But um, some devices that we have don't have those resistors. And so when you plug them into a proper USB PD device, such as a MacBook or um, a Mac uh, power supply, or good quality, like this uh, USB um, power supply you have here. This is like a proper PD power supply. They don't, they, it just doesn't work. And you're like, is my cable bad? And it's like, no, they, people like save 0.004 cents. Congratulations. And then put the resistors on. But you you can't do anything about that. And the reason they didn't you notice it didn't work is because they used a USB A to C adapter. And inside that, you know, the, the, the USB PD isn't used because it just gets five volts from the USB A. Um, which doesn't have power delivery negotiation. And so this basically has the two USB connectors and everything's connected through, except for the CC lines. The CC lines are brought out and connected to separate 5.1K resistors. And so each side is going to see as if there's like USB, like 5.1, you know, K resistors on it. And so um, you'll still need a cable, but then if you put that in line, it'll solve the problem of like, why does it not work? And I wanted to have one be a plug, but I couldn't find any good surface mount, like mechanically strong surface mount plug connectors. Like they all needed to be in a case. Yeah. 
anyways. So there, some folks got in an argument in like the YouTube comments. So I just turned off the comments on that particular video. That's funny. because they were they were being mean to each other, and then someone's like, "Well, it's Adafruit's fault. The USB C spec is is messed up." It's like, no, it's not. It, I had to like, do that. like it's really not. Um, so I just uh, people couldn't get along. So I. Just wow, really like stiff kids. No, it was like a full on like hate thread. Like, were they they were they angry at the USB C spec? Yes, they're like, this shouldn't be needed, and it's like, if you know, if you if if if, if they would have the same, like it just it went on and on. I, look, I mean, I agree that like they clearly wasn't things didn't work out. It didn't really work out, yeah. but um, you even the Nintendo Switch had them wrong the first way. Other than yeah, I think it's amazing because... how few things got it right the first time around. I think when people think about like USB-C and power cables and power supplies, it's because it's such an intimate thing. It's in their homes and they're just reminded every day in some way that it's like, that's my thing near my alarm clock doesn't work. It's like, oh, and they just want to blame someone. Anyways, um, yeah. that's our top secret of the week. 